My guests are seated and ready going through uh, some of their documents. My guest this morning, Abdul Malik Kubako, editor-in-chief of the New Crusading Guide newspaper, a regular panelist, Kofi Bento, private legal practitioner, vice president, Imani, Africa. Inus Afuseini is MP and ranking member, legal, constitutional, and parliamentary affairs of the August Parliament of the Republic of Ghana. Alexander Kwamina Afenyomaki is MP, member, Public Accounts, Defense, and Interior Committees of Parliament. Gentlemen, good morning <coughs> and welcome to News File. Good morning. Good, morning. good, morning. good to have you. And um, in my introduction, you may have heard me mention some crusaders of an ally, and one of them is here. So let's see how it goes. They are crusading to raise 183 votes against an ally uh, to restrict entry into the Ghana School of Law. Now, we'll deal with the first matter that um, got many people sad yesterday, but got a good number of people also excited. In fact, it did get some people angry, angry, because they say the sentences are not punitive enough. We'll take a, uh, this break and return to deal with the sentencing of Abugapele and Philip Asibit. You're welcome back. This is News Friday, the most authoritative news analysis show. We'll begin this discussion on this note. Good morning, Manasi Azuri Awine. Good morning, Samson. All right, so reduce the volume on the set before you add your TV or your radio. Uh, I've done that. Okay, thank you very much. Now, see what you have done. Someone's uh, people's fathers uh, have been put into jail six years and 12 years. Yes, I'm listening, Samson. <laughs> That's a question. What I have done? Yes, because in 2012, you started the whole story about Jida, right? I think you'd be more right to say what they have done, because I only reported what they have done, <laughs> and what they have done has landed them where they are today. So I think the right way to put it is what they have done. Okay. Now, what exactly was this story about? Tell us. This story was about some JIDA officials who had connived to create an account and found a way of siphoning funds into that account and forging signatures to withdraw that money. So when I got this lead, I decided to follow up on each one of them. And as I proceeded, I realized that there were bigger forces, bigger fishes, and even more powerful companies involved in uh, greater schemes than initially thought. So the initial amount involved was only 20 3,000 Ghana cities, but by the time this investigation ended, we realized we we're getting to about a billion worth of cities that was spent in a way that was not good. And as I speak, we're able to retrieve about 60 million Ghana cities. That's from the Agams group of companies, and this amount is made up of interest free loans. But there's close to 300 million Ghana cities that, if this nation gets serious, we should be able to get from this Jida scandal. Tell us specifically about the Philip Asibit and Abuga Pele uh, contract that has landed them in jail. There were two different contracts. One was to train some youth, about 5,000 of them, in oil and gas. We had a lot of models. So this model was titled the oil and gas model. And it was to be done by the Goodwill International Group, which was owned or which is still owned by Philip Asibit. So that's one of them. It was found out that the training, as in almost all the models, was not done or done well. We have the second one, which was to ensure some financial engineering for JIDA. And this was, again, to be done by the Goodwill International Group. 
And this company was to help Jida get a grant of 65 million Ghana cities from the World Bank. And the company was entitled to 3.5% of that amount. And as it turned out, the money did not come and the processes were even not clean or tidy. Yet this company was paid 3%, which is about 2 million Ghana cities. So these were the issues, specific issues, that landed Abu Gapele and Philip Asibit in court. But I must also stress that this was about the least of the misappropriations done in Jida. Okay, that's what I'm interested in because you are here to say that these are rather the small fishes in the bigger scam. What do you mean by that? I'm saying this because there, uh, there are quite a number of issues we found out. And if you read the committee's report, and what went to court can be found in the committee's report. After we did our investigation, the government set up a ministerial impact assessment committee, which was chaired by the West African manager of Ernst & Young, Ferdinand Gunn, and they came out with, the committee members came out with a report. And what went to court was taken from that committee's report. We also have some other incidents that are also very bad, which are also captured in the report. I just want to take you through just a few of them. Mm. In July 2012, a contract was signed with RLG Limited. And for that contract, their company was supposed to train 15,000 youth in the year 2013 in ICT and mobile phone repairs. The company claimed it trained only 4,222. That's about 28% of the total number. Yet this company received all the payment. That's the 25.5 uh, million Ghana cities for this project. As we speak, there has even not been any verification to find out whether the 4,000 people were trained. And the 4,000 people, even if they trained all of them, the amount of money this company was entitled to was about 7 million Ghana cities. So there is a difference or a balance of 18.3 million Ghana cities, which nobody has pursued ROG to take this money or ask anybody to answer for it. We know the JIDA models were done in such a way that the people trained and they were paid. But even before the first beneficiary was recruited for ROG, all the money was paid. And the Minister of State at the time was Clement Kofi Humado, who was in charge of youth and sports. We take a company like Better Ghana Management Services Limited. This company is a subsidiary of the Jospon Group. And if you look at the report, it says this company charged for training not needed and not delivered. And this amount was 58.15 million Ghana cities. And it was supposed to train the health beneficiaries uh, Help those in the health model, education model, and paid internship. But these people were already recruited and working before the company was engaged. So from the onset, it was clear the training was not needed. But the state paid 58.15 million Ghana cities to this company. As we speak, nothing has been done about it. This company, again, overcharged for bicycles to the tune of 9 million Ghana cities. So if you look at Better Ghana Management Service alone, we are talking about 67.15 million Ghana cities. So if somebody is prosecuted for 3.3 million Ghana cities, what happened to this one? If you look at another company, Zoom Lion Ghana Limited, they were paid or overcharged the state by some 74 million Ghana cities. This is captured on page 131 of the JIDA report. And so what happened? Nothing has been done about this contract. In fact, it was the only contract that survived the cancellation because the, there was a presidential order. Oh, sorry, the last, time, the last time I checked, I thought they, were, they had been invited by CID or Yoko and so on, and they were answering some questions. No, as we speak, nothing of that sort has happened. What they are answering the questions for is the robbing the assembly's documentary we did last year. Okay, okay. And it is okay. not in relation to this contract. All right, so finish up on the last point quickly. Yes, so what I'm saying is that this company has also not been made to uh, refund the money or no action has been taken. 
It is interesting to also note that by the time this, the Better Ghana contract was signed, the Jida management said it was a bad contract, so the minister should not sign it. That's Clement Kofi Humado. He went ahead to sign it. When the contract was signed, a few months later, problems started emerging. All the ten regional directors of Jida wrote a letter and signed that the contract be terminated because the contractor did not follow, do, uh, did not do what it was supposed to do. Mm. Abu Gapele wrote a cover note and forwarded it to Clement Kofi Humado. Nothing was done about it. Finally, when Abu Gapele was exiting after winning his parliamentary seat, he prepared a handing over note and so mentioned the problem with this contract. That contract was not cancelled and the nation lost at least 240 million Ghana cities as management fees to this company. Eventually, the models collapsed and the people were asked to go home. So the reason I say they are mm. small fishes or this is selective justice is that if you go through the reports, a lot of terrible things happen, including a song Saba taking money to train 2,000 youth in Guinea rearing in the Upper East, Upper West, and Northern regions. No single youth was trained. The money was paid. And all of that, nobody has said anything. The only form of justice that was done was the recovery of interest-free loans from the Agams Group. Okay. That is 60 million Ghana cities, something. Okay. Thank you very much, Manasi Azuri Awini. Okay. So Manasi Azuri Awini is investigative journalist uh, with the multimedia uh, group. And um, he started blowing the whistle and eventually... The government then set up a committee that went into the details and um, the result is what was uh, put in court. And he says there's been selective justice or that those who have been prosecuted um, are actually the small fishes. Okay, so I think I can start with you, Kofi. Hmm. Already there are those who suggest that six years and 12 years are two lenient sentences to be given to um, these persons. Granted that the court has found that they indeed scammed the country. Good morning. Let me put it this way. Mm. If you give me a million dollars and you told me to go and hide for six years under trying conditions, and get back and keep the money, I might do it. There's an order of the court for the retrieval of the money through uh, laying, I mean, attaching any of the assets of these persons. I suspect that your suspicion is that by this time, they may have uh, divested their interest or uh, done hidden their ownership of these things. Exactly. And that is also why we must do a better follow through and in terms of dealing with even these crimes, how we approach it. We've had cause to discuss it here, that how the prosecutors approach it, how the whole thing is dealt with, will send the right message. Now, it's not only I who might consider going away for six years for a million dollars. 99% of Ghanaians will. What that means in reality is that if this is all that happens for the monumental mess that we've seen, you are really not punishing crime. But you see, we've sat here and complained that nobody goes to jail for stealing money from Ghana. So in a sense, this is a plus. But let's get this right. I haven't met anybody who is happy that the gentlemen are going to go to jail because of what they've done. Ghanaians, naturally, we don't like that. And I don't like that too. But look, if you spend time in our hinterlands, you spend time with poor people, even go to some of the health institutions, and you see the damage you see the stress, you see the poverty, the grinding need, yes. okay, that people have to deal with. And then you cast your mind to some of these people who have been giving millions of dollars to help our people. And they just take it and they spend it. You will get a better perspective why we need to be doing some of the things we are doing. Okay. But something, this is so just the let beginning. Me, let me read this uh, portion of the judgment to you. And that is, uh, I'm reading pages 52 and 53. That's the sentencing. Um... Her ladyship, if you are sorry, um, said this one. It says, um, I must make a brief remark about the manner in which the lawyers in this matter um, file their submissions. Apart from the lawyers for the Republic, 
who were diligent enough to file on the date directed and are hereby commended, all the others fell in breach with Mr. Abujuan filing a week late and Mr. Pencil two weeks late. I would encourage up and coming lawyers to emulate the example of Mrs. Kelson for the Republic. Now we'll come to a point on that mm -hmm. about the diligence yeah. of the lawyers of the state. Mm -hmm. Because too often they take a lot of bashing mm -hmm. when they are actually doing a good job. Mm -hmm. um, now she gets to the sentence and she says, after having heard the sentiments of all counsel in the matter and having assessed the entire evidence, this court puts on record that the sentences to be imposed have the following considerations. A, it is acknowledged that the accused persons are first offenders, but they are not young offenders. In this instance, these accused persons are men of the world, quite advanced in age, and as such, the lessons to be learned by a young first offender are already known to them. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting point. <laughs> B, this court notes also that when giving the opportunity to make restitution, both accused persons were not forthcoming, mm -hmm. meaning that A1 in particular, after having been convicted, is bent on holding on to proceeds of crime, and A1 is Philip Asibit. Um, the court also notes that the very also notes that the very remorseless and unrepentant attitude of the accused persons. Mm -hmm. So it notes the very remorseless and unrepentant attitude of the accused persons. D, the court also notes the caliber of persons the accused persons are, a former member of parliament and an entrepreneur. The whole idea of defrauding the state should not be associated with them. Finally, the court notes that the canker of stealing from the, Repub uh, from the public, hmm. too many people say this is what we should be saying instead mm -hmm. of saying corruption. Mm -hmm. Finally, the court notes that the canker of stealing from the public, corruption under the color of office and white color crime are rife in this country and must be decisively dealt with. In the circumstances, punitive sentences will be meted out to them so that they and those who dream of following such path will be deterred from doing so. Accused persons are sentenced as follows. A, on count one, two, three, four, five, and seven, A1 is sentenced to a term of 12 years imprisonment in hard labor. On count six <coughs> and eight, on the charge of abetment of crime, namely defrauding by false pretense, A2, Abugapele, the court noting that <clears throat> there was no evidence adduced to show that he received proceeds of crime, would be sent uh, would sentence him to a term of six years <clears throat> imprisonment in hard labor. C, on counts 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14, on dishonestly causing loss to the public property, A1 is sentenced to a term of three years imprisonment in hard labor. D, that's the final one. On count 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19, on causing financial loss to the state, A2 Abugapele is sentenced to a term of imprisonment of four years in hard labor. In accordance with Section 6 of SMCD 140 and Section 17, 147B of Act 30, the state is ordered to recover the value of any property or asset belonging to A1. That's Philip Asibi, the businessman mm -hmm. who is known to have kept the money and was not ready to even mm -hmm. uh, suggest that he will pay some of it. To the tune of the equivalent of 1,140,626 US dollars and 68 cents. So that's it. Right. So there's a lot in this one, but you know, Part of those who have read this and followed this know that one, this is what they were caught for. There's a lot more, like Manasseh is saying. Mm. Millions of dollars more. This is what they were caught for. And their attitude, those who followed, the judge is making a point of it. And 
people must note it is very rare for judges to do this. So that tells you it was serious, the kind of remorselessness, and the fact that these people knew we've done it. And I've, in fact, their counsel was saying that they didn't even want to co cooperate necessarily. They felt like, well, you prove your case and let's see what will happen. Right. All right? And then they end up with this sentence. People felt it was lenient. So if you follow this, you understand why people think it's lenient. And then this issue about the Attorney General's office and the prosecutors. Right. Samson, there's a major issue we need to deal with here. And we'll come to the issue of lawyers themselves, numbers. In another place, you have 10 people working on this. Mm. So the burden is not on one person. The AGC says they need a minimum of 600. Yeah. They are currently working with half of that number. Yeah, so that's another matter we have to deal mm. with. Then you have this very important issue of moral hazard. You have one underpaid state attorney going after somebody who is stolen $10 million. Mm -hmm. Why would that person not be given $100,000 and made to rest? And I'm telling you, this country, we've seen plenty. Plenty. Create loot and share. And those of us who know how that system works, we know how mm. we end up with botched cases. Right. Now, in other places, something, and this one, it will in your to our benefit, but it's good for the country. Why would they not? Prosecutions can be done by private lawyers. I'm saying this not because I want to work for my law firm, which I will take if they give me. <laughs> but, you see, you need to have a certain motivation. If they ask you to come to the Attorney General, you won't go. I won't go. For certain reasons, I won't go. So you are part of the problem. No, I'm not. I'm part of the solution. They <laughs> okay. just have to change the paradigm. All right. Now, I hope that the state attorneys will be given sufficient enough motivation, which is to say, if you go after a million dollars, they should give him 100,000. Then that person will be motivated so to do. We don't have a system for that. If, however, you use all these other lawyers going around, and you just made, made a point about growing our law firms, okay, that will give capacity. If I were to go after that million dollars, two million dollars, and I knew I was going to get 10% of it, okay, I'll have a certain motivation, I'll bring a certain attention to it. We need to, you know, have a certain appreciation of the <coughs> stress that our AGs or state attorneys are under, okay, and the moral hazard and the temptation that they come under. Okay, and cut them a bit of slack because this work is difficult, but if they don't do it well, the whole nation loses. I need to say something about this whole concept of fighting crime. I don't think as a country, even with this, this is tokenism. This is one out of many, like Manasa said, and sometimes we have the uh, penchant of we do one and then we go to sleep. Okay, truth is we are not as serious as we should be in fighting crime, as even when it is open face. What has happened to the NCA stealing? Where people just distributed money? Why is it taking so long? What has happened to $74 million of SNITS software? Why is it taking so long? Oh, as for the SNITS matter, just this week, we have been told that Ioko is now finishing its uh, investigations in it. Why are you in a hurry? Why when it comes to is the it NCA taking matter, so long? NCA matter is before the court and there's an um, aspect of it that has been referred to the Supreme Court. That has to be determined before they come back. If you, you know like, steal so a why goat. Are you about steal a goat. If you like, go and steal food. Okay? And you see the speed with which the state descends. Why is that some people took money, they stole it and shared it, they've confessed to it. Okay? Why is it taking so long? Maybe look, those who steal goats and things, hold on. they don't I, I, have lawyers. So I need to finish so this. So they are not able to Just put up give me any, this one, one, one credible Let me make this point. You see? Yes. Even if you take this sanita sanitation thing, mm. okay, as a country, okay, one, our sanitation strategy has failed, even though we've used millions of dollars trying to, you know, deal with sanitation. In fact, one of the things we are doing this year in Imani is to brainstorm why Ghana's sanitation strategy has failed. Interestingly, and I'll make a point that you'll find a bit curious, even though we've spent a lot, we've given it a lot of attention, we have ministries, these assemblies, there are two ministries for sanitation, okay, we are not solving the problem. Do you know Ghana has one of the persons who has spent or invested more in sanitation than anybody in West Africa? I'm mm. talking about just one. And it's one of the few multinational companies that we have in this country. Okay. The man is working free. Why? Why? Because we've not made any proof against him. Meanwhile, there are a series of investigations going on. We need to fix the sanitation problem, but we also do not need to have a situation where we seem to be encouraging criminal activity. In other words, what are we doing with all these things that we are You are not saying that you have evidence of criminality against I him am not. or that company? <laughs> I am actually making this okay. point that we need to deal with this issue mm. and stop behaving as if just one is a criminal. Okay. Let us see the effect of the investigations. Okay, We need 
to make sure that if we are going to solve that sanitation problem, we clear the rules there. We need to make sure that businessmen like him who have invested at our last count, it was about $200 million. Okay, are cleared of all the things. Government people are working with him behind the scenes. And then they seem to vilify him in the open. You know what I've done regarding that person. But my point is, we need to get serious about dealing with this thing okay. and clear it once and for all. Right. Instead of playing these mm. games, and I hope this is not the end mm. of dealing with these matters. We need a real effort okay. to clear all these matters now, once and now, for all. Now, in terms of saying you discover that the considerations informing the sentencing, clearly the judge makes a point. It does appear that uh, Abu Gapele may have been just a victim of circumstance. Well, <laughs> thank you so very much. Uh, I, I don't know whether to weep or to laugh. Hmm. Or both. Or both. I just don't know. Uh, Abu Gapele was my senior in middle school. Okay. In St. Joseph's Middle, in Tabale. So I don't know. Uh, I think the Abu Gapile was not a victim of circumstances. Okay. Manasi Abuga, tells, us, Abuga Manasi Pile tells us of even his handing over, even before he handed over, writing to caution against certain contracts and asking them to be terminated because they are bad, and in his handing over notes, repeating these things, but nothing has been done. That appears to have been an afterthought. Okay. Mm. Okay. All these years. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Go, go ahead. See, so because mm. as lawyers, I mean, uh, and I'm speaking as a lawyer, not uh, on the part of a friendship which is founded on emotive relationship, I think I sympathize entirely with Abu Okay. But on the matter of law, it clearly is an afterthought. I mean, there are many processes that one has to go through before you decide whether or not to engage somebody to perform a contract. And if you feel <coughs> refuse or neglect to undertake those processes, then you are on a suicide, suicide mis mission, like Martin Amidu says. Mm. Uh, what, what, was, what convinced you that Asibit Philip will be able to access that money from the World Bank? I mean, you should be able to tell us what convinced you. And that even before he accessed that money, he He's paid, paid the interest. He mm. paid the commission. The commission. Mm. So what, what, what is it? You see, that's the problem that I have. That it might be the smallest in the whole I mean, equation. But what was it that that convinced you that this man who was telling me that this model that I'm about to undertake at the NYEP, this person can access money for me? What is it that Philip could do that government could not mm. do? You see, so... And this is dealing so with the World Bank. Mm. This is dealing with the World Bank. And, and an, who, an, individual an individual could do it better than the, the government. government. you know, so... That's your surprise. That's my surprise. And, and so probably... After having been led along the line, he then came to the realization that probably he was moving on the wrong path. So he started cautioning, he started applying the brakes, but that time it was too late. But this is not the first time we are hearing of people getting paid for financial engineering. Mm -hmm. And this is what this guy was paid for. But like Manasi suggests, some account was created, and it could be that the money is put in there and some sharing goes on. Well, it's, it's a very difficult I'm case. I'm so tempted to comment, but <laughs> it's, it's, it's a very difficult case, to be honest with you. But uh, uh, when I went into public office, I was warned, and, I, and this, is, this is still a warning to many of us, that the memory of the dead is a warning to a living. Mm. Now, people, temptations will come in your office when you are in public office. People will come with juicy arrangements mm. trying to entice you. You must always keep your eyes open. Always keep your eyes open. Uh, but the good thing is that Manasi, yes, they started, and that is good. That's very good activism. That's what journalists are supposed to do. And so there are investigations uh, uh, I mean, uncovered some form of rot uh, that was going on. Government did not sleep on that investigation. Government established a committee uh, led by a renowned accountant who made recommendations, government started implementing the recommendations. Right. Now, the fact is, this case was sent to court many years ago. It had to take a decision. I mean, you must understand the decision that was taken to prosecute one of the appointees of the president. Mm. A difficult de decision. I know that... Uh, the, yeah, the criticism, uh, again, is that there are people at the top, including the minister then, and you left uh, them. Well, I, I, I don't know what informed the choice. I can't tell, I can't speak for how the choice was determined. 
But I'm, I, I can speak for the relationship between Abu Pele and the former president. And, uh, and I know that it was a difficult decision to refer the matter to the uh, inves investigative authorities to investigate him. It was quite difficult. Uh, but it had to be done. Uh, we can only hope that this will be a learning camp. His lawyers are saying they will appeal. Uh, we wish them the best mm. in their appeal. Mm. Uh, but it's really, really very, very difficult. Really you. Very Would difficult. you say this is a shot in the arm for the anti-corruption fight? And what a coincidence. Martin Amidou was outdoored yesterday. Well, uh, well, well, it's a shot in the arm. But it also shows that John Dramani Mahama was actually not sleeping in his fight against corruption. He is was this all? It's not all. You see, when Is we come to tokenism, when we, no, when we come to that, I will demonstrate to you that John Dramani and Mama wasn't sleeping. I yet, I'm mean, yet to be reminded of a statement made by John Dramani and Mama exonerating his ministers or his appointees from corrupt activities. All through his four-year reign. So, it's not as if to say that John Dramani Mama was sleeping. John Dramani and Mama constantly reminded us that there were processes. In fact, in one press conference, he made reference to the military era dispensation of justice. and said, this, we, are, we are in a democracy, so we must allow the processes to work. And allowing the processes to work take time. And that is now seen as a weakness on my part. He lamented. And so, yes, we will demonstrate. When we come to the CPI, we will demonstrate that John Dramani Mama was actually fighting corruption. OK. <coughs> yes, Abu Afi Yomaki. Well, it's sad to see a colleague uh, MP go to jail. But that is the nature of the law. If you are guilty, you suffer for it. But I think uh, an aspect of the judgment that uh, um, perhaps uh, they could have taken advantage of was the option for restitution. And I am quite surprised that they didn't. After she had delivered the judgments, yes. but uh, again, and then yeah. about to pronounce sentence, yes, that's yeah. my understanding. Yeah. There is the mitigation that, yes, yeah, that's, the, that's that, mitigation. and you are allowed to yeah. show that you are willing to yeah. offer something. Well, and the and, person and the is the also happy that the person who who had the money, mm -hmm. Refused didn't to. show any sign that he was willing to give anything. Well, somebody is in a dock. The lawyer is at the bar. Mm. Uh, I don't know what consultation uh, took place. But be that as it may, that's the conclusion. Mm. They are serving a jail sentence. I'm reading in the papers that the defense counsel uh, saying is going to make a appeal. Pencil, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So let's allow the process to... To, to, to be exhausted. His um, major argument, though, is that he's going on appeal because much of the evidence mm -hmm. that would have gone to the credit of his clients were hidden. They were in the custody of the Attorney General, and they, they did not supply them. Oh, <laughs> but uh, you, could, um, uh, you could apply for compelling others to get those documents. But anyway, mm -hmm. I'm not... okay to tell the senior counsel how he should go about his case. Right. And of course, you cannot uh, fight a matter like this in the media. You use the, the, the law forum, yeah. the law, the yeah. rules, the yeah. uh, right. procedures. Mm. Right. Mm. But um, just to add to what uh, senior counsel, Minister Fusini said, uh, the PFM Act, if you look at it, when we're passing that <laughs> law, <laughs> a very serious one that if with the special prosecutor um, coming in, seriously, politicians would have to wake up. Yeah. Else, <coughs> you go to jail, people will weep. You may not have benefited financially, but a little bit of recklessness on your part, you are out there. Right. So, the PFM Act is something that those in authority now must 
be reading. It should be a Bible. That's public financial management. management so, uh, the last uh, bill, the finance committee. Not only politicians, it. even the civil service. No, 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 public officers, officers must read no, it. No, no, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm emphasizing we politicians because oftentimes it's like the, we the, are the, the problem. Yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. The, 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 yeah, the perception yeah, is on, yeah. on us. But again, back to the civil servants, it is no more I was acting on instruction. Mm. Mm. The PFM is also there, and they would also have to look at it. Because previously, because they would be there, and it's okay. like, as for me, it's not me. Mm. Civil service, I'm <coughs> doing my work. But if you read the law, there are serious provisions that um, uh, gives a wake about up. The, about the restitution up. and your difficulty because they were at the bar and the lawyers would be, uh, you know, they were in the dock and the lawyers would be at the, at the bar. Um, the reporter for for Joy News, uh, Akable, Joy News' Scott rep uh, reporter, says that the judge gave the convicts five minutes to discuss what they could offer. They came back saying they will let the judge decide. Through their lawyer? Yes. Very well. Mm. well so the opportunity was offered. You said they left the mm. themselves in the hands of the court. No, no, right. no. They, 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 you know, even the sentence. You can see clearly from the pronouncement of the court that it, it was largely influence, influenced by their demeanor. You can see clearly. Mm -hmm. The judge was not yes. at all enthused. And, and that's why he visited those and I mean, that, that kind of sentence on them. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, but <laughs> counsel, that's another matter. That's another matter. You see, it, we can argue from the, yeah. from the judgment. But she has the right to. Yes, 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 yes. I mean, yeah. she has um, referred to the remorselessness. Yes. Because they, they, they have the they, they they are unwillingness to take yeah. the offer. Yeah. Yeah. Because they felt that they had not committed any offense. Maybe. Oh, yes. yes. So yeah, yeah. they felt that they had not committed yeah. any and, yeah. and they feel that they can yeah. be successful they, on appeal. Yeah. And they feel they will survive and come back to enjoy. <laughs> well, that one we don't well, know. That's, that's <laughs> another matter. <laughs> <Right. laughs> but something. Yeah. There was... That is if the money there is there, actually. There was, <laughs> there was a similar case, not involving public officers, where an allegation of funds being taken from an account had led to a prosecution. And throughout, no statement was tended to support that claim. Yet the person was pronounced guilty. And the judge raised issue of remorselessness on the part of the accused. And the gentleman was, yes. And when I finished the trial, I said, why didn't you, the judge wanted you to show remorse. He said, no. Because I have not stolen. Where is the bank statement? Okay. You said the bank was alleging that <coughs> I have taken money from uh, a call account. Why is it that they were talking about document? Bring that statement mm -hmm. to prove that I withdrew X amount as a banker on this date and all that. Well, so depending on what was going through the mind, depending on what was going through the mind of the person at the time, mm -hmm. he could influence his demeanor. But right. that is not to suggest that uh, so your point simply is that if the person feels genuinely that the court's decision is wrong and that he is innocent, there's no basis for them to show any remorse. It would influence how they would, they would, they would behave. Right. Like a lawyer, mm. as for you, you are a counsel. Mm. Right. You can tell my, your, your client that, look, the judge wants you to pay. The, the, the client says no. Mm. What else can you do? You can't do anything. Okay. So let's see how it goes. But at the end of the day, the judge has exercised her discretion. Right. I mean, there's a sentencing guideline. Right. And I'm sure the fact that she gave the opportunity for restitution to also tell you, like counsel said, she wanted actually to mitigate, mitigate and get, sure, get the money for the state and avoid custodial the sentence. Contest, okay. But having realized that you were, they were not ready, said, okay, then uh, you are adults. Okay, but you since <coughs> they did not plead guilty from the start, per Section 35 of the Courts Act, she could not have avoided custodial sentence. It would have been lenient, but not avoid. Oh, of course. Uh -huh. Because if they had pleaded guilty from the start and offered reparation, uh -huh, then yes, they could I have agreed. paid and gone free. Yes. The, right. the, 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 there is no, no, not and gone free. Yes, they'll be convicted, but not sentenced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll have, they'll have avoided the custodial yeah. sentence. Yeah. Yes, mm. yes. There is an aspect in the, in the judgment that their properties must be attached. Yes, there's oh. an order. The, the, yes. the post-conviction uh, proceed, uh -huh. proceedings. Yes, you're right. Yes. Mm. That one is... That's uh, the one with something million. Mm -hmm. 
it has to it has to if you look at the yoko act it provides extensively on mm -hmm. how to to go about go about that so i'm right. sure that's that's purely a matter she of said she said in accordance with section six of the smcb uh, 140 and section 147 b of act 30 the state is ordered to recover the value of any property or asset belonging to a1 to the tune of the equivalent of one million one hundred and forty eight thousand six hundred and twenty six u.s dollars and sixty uh, sixty eight cents Th there are those who are suggesting that look <laughs> at this point you you can't expect to get anything well, they, they, they would have dissipated or concealed, mm -hmm. divested their interest in these things, so the states will be chasing the wind. Well, they have indicated that they are appealing. Yes. Let's see how it goes. Okay. <laughs> well, well, well. The A shot in the arm spoken. for the corruption fight? Well, yes. Yes, I agree. But perhaps not enough. But it's okay. We can do with it. But it, uh, it appears to me that uh, financial engineers mm -hmm. do not have enough motivation or enthusiasm to engage in uh, restitution and reparations. <laughs> 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 and even if you rule that their properties and assets must be attached and recovered and all those things, it looks as if it's a huge challenge, very protracted tussle to try <laughs> and get those uh, properties and assets. We will get you. I haven't mentioned it. But the innuendo is clear, isn't it? He didn't say it. He said it. He's making a statement. So you are the great party, <laughs> not Kuku Bahu. <laughs> but look, honestly, yes, I, I, I've been to jail before. Mm. I wasn't convicted, mm. neither was I sentenced, mm. but at least you feel the same effect. Yes, so it's, yeah. no, it's no joke. It's no joke Even yeah. a day or a, day, yeah. a month mm. in prison is no joke. Mm. I'm right. telling you honestly. Mm. So I feel for them. Mm. The only crime that I go for the maximum is when it's treason. Mm. Then I don't care if you are shot dead, mm. uh, executed, let me put mm. it that way. But otherwise, I feel for anybody mm. who is sentenced to mm. prison. The conditions we have in our prisons are no jokes mm. you know not like elsewhere where it's like a hotel mm. and you have all the access to modern technology and things mm. so it's a painful thing mm. uh, six years 12 years some are saying it's lenient it's no big thing i can tell you it's it's, it's a lot mm. even though if we had been able to retrieve the money i would have been more comfortable with that as we speak the court has spoken it's a level at the high court I've heard the lawyers, especially the lawyer for the first accused, uh, making a case against the judgment, and, and that's legitimate. He had every right to crit critique the judgment and pointing out some loopholes and suggesting they'll go for an appeal. But until the appeal, Court of Appeal overturns what the High Court has done, we'll proceed with the, what we have now, which is the High Court's judgment. And that means a guilty verdict was passed. Mm. Yes, I agree that this is one good shot, a sign also of uh, the prowess of investigative journalism. There's no doubt about that, yeah. that uh, Manasseh and this station, subsequently other media houses joined, uh, have done justice to this country. They've, they've actually done the, the public service, mm. which is required of all of us. Of course, I'm aware that there were elements in the state, state security did one or two things but truly, but for the journalistic, journalistic intervention, I'm sure things wouldn't have reached where we are. Mm -hmm. So we still must put a premium on the journalist, uh, what the journalist and the media houses did. And in this case, it's Manasseh and your station. So that's important, and mm -hmm. we would need more of those things. The missing link, listening to Manasseh, maybe that could be captured as Fusini was seen within the CPI when we come there. But Manasseh is making a case, and I think it's a very serious case. Why I defer to him on this thing is that he's done the work. Right. He's done more work than any of us have done. Okay. And so he has a deeper insight into those areas. It appears there are some missing links. And if we are talking about this particular case, 
a real missing link happens to be the former minister, right. who I believe is in the parliament now. Mm. He's a member of parliament. He should be back. I'm sure he's back. No, I mean he's a member of parliament. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Which particular one? There were many ministers. The minister, Clement Emma. Oh, he's in parliament. Yeah. 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 Yes. Uh, so, yeah. I would I, I like to caution our friends in the NDC. When they go out there and lift this one, this particular one, and suggest, and my brother Fusini almost did that, even though he didn't expand it, to vindicate uh, somebody. Uh, they opened the floodgates for closer and more critical examination as to what was left out. In fact, the commentary at the time was that, just like what happened in the Wyoming prosecutions at the High Court, because of the absence of key persons like the Attorney General then, or, <coughs> you know... The, the uh, Director of Finance, yes. the Director of uh, yes. Legal... B this one too would have suffered a similar fate because mm -hmm. of the absence of those who were signing mm -hmm. and doing all that. Yes, so again, it comes to quality of uh, prosecution, yeah. mm -hmm. investigation yeah. and prosecution before right. it gets to the verdict. No, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't expand. I'm sure when we come to CPI, mm. some of these things will come back on the table. All but right. but when I say, uh, I'm but happy that four of us here mm. are lawyers. Mm. Uh, he said something that I, I, I want to put on, I mean, let our viewers know, especially the public, public servants. Since the Nuremberg trials, mm -hmm. relying on superior orders for the commission of a crime. It's not a defense. It's not a defense. Mm. Interesting. Yes, yes. So you can now, civil servants can now say that I took instructions. Mm. No, 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 no. And then <laughs> Ghana, we have firmly, we have firmly established the principle against vicarious responsibility for the commission of a crime. I see. Firmly. <laughs> it does appear that there are situations where it applies, where, where if you can show the, where the orders are coming, coming from, from yes. you yourself will not be liable. Yeah, you, as, as yes. if you can show. Right. Yes, yes, and yes. Uh, right. um, and then you can show duress or something. Right. right. Mm. Okay. Yes. And something. Mm. Quickly. Yeah. Well, another very important matter. Mm. You see, trials of this nature should also encourage people to rather deal with facts. You see, when Mr. Martin Amidu was uh, being vetted, well, I followed all his responses. And one of the issues that he himself could not come out clearly was on this, some of the articles about corruption. He, at a point, he said perception. Yes. Although he has subsequently written to uh, do some <coughs> uh, <coughs> cleanup yeah. or justification, but you could see that there's uh, a weak link. My problem is situations where the media will be out there pronouncing the guilt of people when same is not backed by law. I mean, facts. Okay. Uh, Council Bento was talking about Zoom Lion businessmen, uh, some businessmen, sometimes the allegations, oh, he's corrupt, he's done this, mm. but there's no, nothing to back it. Right. We have to distinguish that. Has the person done anything illegal? Has the person committed a crime? Are there facts to back it? And bear in mind that for a particular criminal conduct, there are a set of facts or what we call um, um, evidence of probative value, <coughs> which will spell out the nature of the offense mm. so that the prosecution can do it. Right. If we continue to do that, then it gives people also the peace of mind so that nobody will just get up and then just publish throw something out there to, 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 to taint somebody. It's yeah, important. All right. So this. It okay. It gives it's, it's very mm. important yeah. what you say. And just give me a minute. I beg you. Because I worry, and it's informed by some work that we are doing already. Like you said, people just publish something. The state seems to investigate it. And we never get an end. Now, civil servants are therefore not sure right now, do we have a public-private partnership in dealing with sanitation or not? How do you handle this businessman? I think we must... Take these things out because we need to send a message to <coughs> criminals like Asibit who have been convicted, but also businessmen, serious businessmen. And to that extent, therefore, we don't need to destroy them if we don't have real evidence against them. I am very worried, and I think we'll have time Something to Something before that. you. Before we before need to them. deal before. with this thing, before. and then it's clear that you can't hide behind anybody and say, I suspect. Mm. If it's so, let it be. If it is not, let the people do business.
Bento, yes. I think that, again, probably your, uh, your establishment will be looking at how long did it take us to prosec prosecute this case? Mm -hmm. It's very important. Mm -hmm. We're looking at the process, mm -hmm. targeting the this process of four years. Four years. So will the four years enable the persons who were involved in the commission of the crime to dissipate the money? Mm -hmm. So is, do we look at a process where, or a system where we can expeditiously mm -hmm. try, convict, and retrieve, mm -hmm. than letting the case drag on, they have a false illusion that they might walk away free, mm -hmm. they enjoy the... But somebody use few months to dissipate. Yes, so, so that, yeah. that yeah. also, that, 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 in fact, that, that reinforces the dissipate argument. Dissipate or conceive? Conceive, yeah, yeah. both. No, no, about also, also, we have freezing uh, powers. No, yeah. about we are the courts have freeze, freezing see, powers. That's why what Inosa is saying is crucial. Look, we are we are brainstorming sanitation. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. we are brainstorming sanitation as we speak. But we've come to the point we've come to where we see that somehow the solution to dealing with sanitation in Ghana has to do with treating people who are accused of criminal action and acting swiftly. 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 I mean, swiftly. Not, okay. Yeah. okay. So, so, so maybe, that issue maybe is the very point important. you are making, like uh, mm. Afiyama Makin was about to refer to, particularly using the Ioko Act, mm. and now a more tightened one, yes. the OSP Act. Mm. You are able, on the point of being arrested, mm. point of being accused and arrested, mm. you know, certain embargoes can be put on your... Even on the mere like, allegation of suspicion, they yes. can and certain... And okay. Okay. Action yes. to yes. clear right. or convict. Samson, last yes. point. Mm. It's important. Mm. Since we are talking issues of criminal procedures mm. and uh, criminal law, when investigations are conducted and reports are out, the findings are that no, the person has not done anything untoward. Mm -hmm. We have to also educate the public to have confidence and trust our system. Right. Right. Say right. that even where <laughs> the the then this one goes, especially you in opposition now. When you allege and you find nothing, mm -hmm. you don't go on a wild goose chase. <laughs> This yeah, you damage court. people. No, this no, 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 the ordinarily prudent person would have received the required information if he had taken the trouble to make enquiries. Their knowledge would be imputed to anyone so placed who failed to make the necessary enquiries. Uh -huh. Where a person does not take steps to make enquiries because of an unwillingness to know the answer, that is a cultivated state of ignorance willful blindness the knowledge would be constructed from the circumstances in this instance <laughs> in this instance one can only conclude by saying that a2 that's a bugapeli ought to have been setting of what he put down particularly when he knew that it had potential to cost this nation quite significant sums of money Additionally, one cannot deny the fact that his intervention in submitting the memo facilitated the fraud of A1. So why don't you read Section 96 of the Public Financial Management Act? It, it, that is the law. Section 96, yes. read it. Read mm. it before we take Offenses a break. Offenses and penalties. One says a person acting in an office or employment, this is including private, mm. connected with the procurement or control of government stores, or the collection, management, or disbursement of amounts in respect of a public fund or a public trust, who, one, makes an unauthorized commitment, makes an authorized co that's the commitment, of, ah, commitment, resulting in a financial, financial obligation, obligation for government. Mm. There's so much to say here. Yeah. You haven't even paid money. <laughs> Fails to collect yeah. monies due government, yeah. is responsible for any improper payment of public funds, mm -hmm. or payment of money, mm. public or not. Mm that is not duly verified in line with existing procedures. Mm. You can pay money correctly, mm. but you don't do it by the right procedure. Mm. It's responsible for any deficiency mm. in or for the loss, damage, or destruction of any public funds. Stamp, 
security, stores, or any other government property, accepts or receives money or valuable consideration for the performance of an official duty, in relation to the duties of that person, willfully makes or signs a false mm. certificate, mm. false return, mm. or false entry in a book, or finally fails to report knowledge or information in respect of fraud committed by a person against the government contrary to any enactment related to the public financial management or to the appropriate authority or law enforcement authority <coughs> or commits an offense and is liable on summary conviction to a term of imprisonment of not less than six months and not more than five years to a fine as such an all catching provision I and on that serious. note let's listen to lawyer quick pencil mm -hmm. for uh, as uh, philip Asibet as we go on break. When we return, I'll read some of your messages. Some of you think that the sentence should have been higher, harsher. It was tactical. So it confirmed to us that you, you know, be calling places, for that appeal. Listen carefully. I mean, obviously, I've got instruction. We're going to do that. You know, other places, they've got what they call plea bargaining. Okay? A plea bargaining is essentially a situation in which the, uh, the prosecution and the, and, the, and, the, and the defense can agree, negotiate, that, okay, if we bring in such amount, you will not get this kind of sentencing and so forth and so on. But in the situation that we found ourselves, even if we decided that we're going to, I'm talking about the accused persons, they were even going to refund the entire amount. The judge will still go ahead and sentence them. So what benefits that to me? If indeed I'm accused of having stolen your money and I give you that money, you still have the right to sentence me for a term that I do not know. Nobody's going to do that. So how soon can we expect you to file that appeal? We've already said you filed it. Please, I'm acting on my client's instructions, but to the very best of what I know, based on what we have discussed, I, I, I need time next week that appeal will come out. And I can also assure you that it will be coupled with an application for bail pending the, the determination of the substantive appeal. That much I can tell you. I, I can assure you that based on the discussions that I have, don't forget that I'm only a lawyer. We always act on instructions, and therefore what I'm telling you is what has transpired between me as a lawyer and my client, and I'm telling you an authority that based on the instructions that I've received after the sentencing, we've been empowered or ordered or directed or instructed to file an appeal, and the appeal will be against the conviction.